Now, Discam Pharmacies launching a health insurance called Discam Health through one of its subsidiaries, Gaelo Holdings. Last year, Discam acquired Gaelo, which has a portfolio of health assets. Discam says it wants to provide affordable universal health care, but in the current economic state, is this viable? And what about issues like access and affordability? Let's have more on this uh, conversation now with the CEO of Gaelo, John Jetson. John, uh, good afternoon, and thank you very much uh, uh, for your time. Why are you doing this now? Dan. Hi, Dan. Thanks for having me. Um, now is um, an important time to deliver health care to, to the broader South African markets. Um, in, I think your previous insert highlights that you know, there is um, pressure on access to care, and the, the, the uh, partnership with DISCAM allows us to provide broad, um, accessible, affordable care in a sustainable way. Does DISCAM have a good enough footprint for access? They do. They've got an excellent footprint and they have a lot of install capability. Um, but the partnership with DISCAM allows us to, to leverage our, our combined assets. Uh, you know, we... We uh, own the Prime Care Network, which has over 9,000 providers in it. So it's a, it's a combination of the two delivery engines that would provide um, significant levels of care to, to the members of Discam Health. Affordability? Now, affordability is an obvious um, uh, challenge in healthcare. I think it's a, it's a complicated um, uh, area to, to provide in, and, and that is a blessing and a curse. We, you know, very good levels of care cost uh, money, but I think the leverage that we've got with with Discam, the scale um, and the intended uh, flow on the back of the members we've got, provides us with the ability to 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 set in place affordable care in a sustainable way. So the price points that we put into the market are, uh, you know, are affordable. It's all in the private health care sector. I mean. Well over 70 percent of South Africans access public health care, and we know the challenges he's facing, yeah. as we've just heard now from Professor Shabir Mahdi there of Vets University when he joined that picket by, by doctors at the Soweto's Chris Honey Baraguana. Yes. Uh, how would this benefit those people who the majority of whom are accessing public health care? And we, we believe there's there's a significant number of people who want to enter the private sector um, and we're making it affordable and accessible. So it's that, you know, that's 72 percent of, of the market that don't have access to, to private health care at this point that we are looking to, to bring into, um, into the, you know, the access to, to affordable quality care that produces really good health outcomes. And we think yeah. we can do both. We think we can provide wide access and affordable. Now, the question of health insurance also brings up a question in my mind, John. Government has been working for years to, to, to implement the national health insurance. There are all kinds of questions around it and, and problems that have been highlighted, including funding. Uh, I mean, uh, another, medical, another medical insurance or health insurance, do you think it's a good thing currently in the, in the private sector when we know that in the future sometime there's going to be NHI? Yeah, I think it. I think it is a good thing. I, I think it wholly aligns to the principles laid out in uh, the the NHI. So, the way we're providing care aligns to what the uh, the state is looking to achieve, um, but it does so in a way that is is immediate and affordable. So, um, you know, the health insurance structures that we trade on are are very well regulated and provide you know massive protections to the consumers. So, I think it's. It, it does um, meet the needs that are that are currently sitting in the market, and it does away it does it in a very responsible way. Dan. So you see yourselves with this initiative like a bridge between the pri public and the private sector of sorts in terms of providing this much uh, needed affordable uh, health insurance. Am, am I wrong? Yes, I think it is a it is a bridge to a certain degree. It provides you know as I say immediate cover and uh, significant cover, and it can coexist. Um, with with the current uh, state system and the medical scheme industry, uh, um, and you know, should NHI come online and be um, augmented, the state uh, healthcare infrastructure be augmented over time, it, it, it plays a, a, a very positive role to support all the initiatives that are in place by the state from a healthcare perspective. So, when does this begin, uh, John? When is it kicking off? Is it is it already um, effective? Your your insurance. 
Yes, Dan, it went uh, live in the market yesterday. So we um, started onboarding our first policyholders in Diskim Health uh, yesterday. Um, obviously, Kylo is a business. The Kylo Group, as you mentioned earlier, has got you know 17 years track record uh, doing this type of work. So it's not new to us, um, but it is new um, with the Diskim uh, brand and alignment. So, yeah. you know, very times for both businesses. What's the key difference between this health insurance and medical aid, for example? A medical aid, um, well, first of all, they sit in different legislative spaces, but I think from a member perspective, uh, medical aid is, um, although very expensive, it provides deep levels of cover um, and uh, where health insurance is very specific into the cover it provides. And the way we built the health insurance products is to provide the most meaningful cover with the best health outcomes at the best price. So, you know, we've looked at healthcare consumption and healthcare requirements, and we try to build a product that uh, meets those needs at the right price point. So there will be some choice. There is choice in health insurance. There's choice in the product design um, and in terms of where you access care. So, um, you know, although there's a very close alignment to the value proposition set out by, by Diskem already delivering um, extensive healthcare value to, to their customers, um, in the product that they put to market, the health insurance product, um, there remains um, wide levels of choice. Okay, finally, I'm going to ask you a similar question, but differently from what I asked you at the beginning, John, as, as we conclude. Does the country need another health insurer? Dan, I, I believe the country does. Um, I think DISCAM, by doing this, can actually play a role in educating the, the wider market around the value of health insurance. And I think that there's significant health outcomes that are delivered by the products, but it's not necessarily well understood by the wider community. And I think this can, through this initiative with us, actually not only provide a good product, but actually lift the awareness, um, which is probably as important as the delivery of care to the, to the members that will be on it. So that's a pretty long answer, but yes, I think the, it's very necessary. There's a low penetration of health insurance in the market at the moment, and through this initiative, we'll raise the awareness, which is a very positive thing for the health of the nation. Thank you very much, John Yutzen. He's, of course, the chief executive officer of Gaelo, a partner with Diskem in launching this new Diskem Health Insurance.